Okay, welcome back. We're going to be doing voltage sources today with resistor divider networks, voltage divider networks. I'm going to start by creating a generic voltage source, and it brings up a dialog of options that I can use, uh, including some of the parameters, basic parameters, part, value, and such. Uh, we're going to decide on a sign today. Uh, there are different kinds of things that you can do with pulses and exponentials, but sinusoids are what we're interested in. Uh, there are nine parameters here that can be used to modify what the sine wave is going to look like um, as it's inputted into our divider network. Uh, some are delays, some have to do with the offset values or the dampening factor or phase, but today we only really care about two, and that's the amplitude voltage, which we're going to set to 5 volts, and the frequency of the sine uh, wave generator, which is going to be at 100 hertz. That's going to become important later. So we're going to do our resistor divider network. We're going to choose 10k first one. We're going to hold control down and then click and that's going to create a copy of that and then we're going to wire everything up together. There we go. Now we're going to label in and out. Okay, we're almost ready. We need the ground. There we go. All right. Oops. Delete that one. All right. Analysis transient. Okay, so what's interesting here is that if you are looking in the mic, the, simula the simulation maximum runtime is important because if you start at one microsecond, if that's all you're going to look at, when you click run, the output is going to look very linear because you're only looking one micro into that 100 hertz signal. So uh, if I go into two, two milli, you're going to start to see the curvature of the sinusoid. Uh, but it won't be until I take the reciprocal of that 100 hertz, which would be 10 millisecond that I'm actually going to get to see everything. So those original graphs I was showing you only this portion of it. So make sure that when you sample or when you um, do your simulation that you are looking at all of the waveform that you have created and then you can make your judgments and conclusions based on that. So you can see the voltage goes up to 5 volts, goes down to minus 5 volts. The resistor divider or voltage divider network goes up to 2.5 volts and then goes down to minus 2.5 volts and it ends at 0. Now uh, the DC indication takes the last value of the graph so this is in femtovolts, this is approximating 0 volts. Uh, the reason it does that uh, is because it just takes the last value. So if I modify this and I go to, let's say, 12 um, and start into the next period of, this, of the sine wave, I can expect that my output is going to be somewhere around here, 2.36, maybe 2.37, something of that nature. And then here we are, 2.378. Uh, that is the voltage. So make sure that if you're using these DC indication features that you also account for the last value of the simulation is what goes into them uh, and that's what gets indicated. So it can be in a resistor divider circuit it's pretty simple like this but when you start having active components like transistors uh, it can be more difficult to determine what's going on from a DC indication perspective. So keep that in mind. Uh, thanks for watching.